greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For our meditation, may I read to you the epistle of St. John, the first letter, 5th chapter, verses 18 to 21. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. The threefold certainty. This letter, first letter of St. John, ends with threefold Christian certainty. They are one. The Christian is emancipated or the Christian is redeemed, delivered from the power of sin, verse 18. Second, the Christian is on God's side, verse 20b. And thirdly, the Christian has the knowledge of the being and the reality of the existence of God. Verse 20. Let us look at the first one. The Christian is redeemed. A Christian is emancipated from sin. Verse 18. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not Keep on sinning. A Christian is delivered or saved from the power of sin. What does this mean? Does it mean that a Christian doesn't sin at all? Here, there is a word of caution. There is a teaching which says, that as a Christian, if you reach a certain level of sanctification, which is to be set apart for God, and when you are entirely sanctified, you never sin. When does this happen? Does it happen? Do we still live in our body, in our flesh? As long as we are in this body of flesh, there is a possibility that a Christian may sin. So, John says in verse 18, a Christian who is emancipated, delivered and saved does not keep on sinning. A Christian cannot be a slave or a victim of sin. Plummer, a New Testament scholar, says a Christian may sin, but his normal condition is resistance to evil. Normal condition. He is not a helpless person because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit creates an awareness in him and brings resistance. For example, the worldly people, the people of this world, though they hate sin, they cannot give up sinning. They know what they are doing is wrong, but they continue to do that. Verse 19, we know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Whole world, the people, lies in the power of the evil one. Therefore, 
द वर्ल्ड इज डिफीटेड बाय सिन ऑन द अदर हैंड ए क्रिश्चियन ए बिलीवर विल नॉट लूज द बैटल फॉर गॉड कीप्स हिम Jesus and the Holy Spirit the triune god guard him the reason is a christian is born of god just like a father will do anything to save his son or daughter from any danger will do anything and similarly the triune god father son and the holy spirit will save and do everything to keep a believer from sinning that's 18 a we know that everyone who has been born of god does not continue to sin westcott another scholar says the christian has an active enemy but he has also a watchful powerful guardian 18b but he who was born of god protects him he who is born of god means who is born of god the first born of god jesus some translation say he who is born of god protects himself yes we have our own efforts but who protects us ultimately it is god the father and the one who is born of him jesus christ through the ministry of the holy spirit to conclude the first point a christian may fall but he rises he gets up again and goes on because god the father god the son and god the holy spirit keeps him what is your experience a christian is emancipated and the second certainty here in this thebas is the christian is on god's side christian is on god's side simply because he is born of god and he is emancipated from god we know that we are from god on the side of god and 20 again we know him who is true and we are in him verse 19 and 20 says we are of god we are in him so a christian is on god's side what is the source of our being how do we get this new life in jesus christ you and i have have at one time in the past made a choice we were presented with an option of believing in jesus christ you receiving jesus christ as our savior by confessing our sins by repenting and accepting what jesus has done on the cross for us we made a choice then and so we are emancipated we made a choice to be on god's side at a particular point in time and therefore we are not on the side of the world anymore though we are in the world Paul says you are in the world but don't be of the world you cannot help but be in the world but be on God's side and this constant and consistent choice will enable us to be aligned with God through the ministry of the holy spirit it's not a one time choice in the past christian life is a walk and as we journey as we progress and as we walk we have to make consistent choices so when we are aligned to the guidance of the holy spirit undoubtedly god 
protects us, 18b. He who is born of God does not keep on sinning. God protects because you are on God's side if you have been emancipated. A Christian is redeemed. Secondly, we said a Christian is on God's side. Thirdly, the Christian has the knowledge of the being and he has the knowledge of the reality of the existence of God. Verse 20, and we know that the Son of God has come. The knowledge of certainty is something which is not ambiguous. No guesswork here. We know that the Son of God has come. Certainty. Sometimes we have questions. <laughs> we say, who am I? Where did I come from? Where am I going? What is my future? What is my destiny? Or who keeps me? Or who protects me? Who gives me guidance? Etc. Etc. The Christian can answer beyond any shadow of doubt that it is God who keeps me. God who keeps us. No doubt about it. That's why verse 20, and we know the Son of God has come and has given us the understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true and in his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, the knowledge that John is talking about, we know, has certain components. The reality of God, the essence of God, has certain components. Consists of, number one, incarnation. A, incarnation. Verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come. Come from heaven, from the presence of God to this earth, to the world. Incarnational truth is important because we know. We know it that Jesus has come. And we know that the Son of God has come. This is incarnation. Jesus came. We are in him and in his side. Incarnation, he came. Because of resurrection, he lives. And because of emancipation, he is in us. He abides in us. He indwells us through the Holy Spirit. The Christian, therefore, is on God's side. Incarnation is very important. Jesus came, he lived, he died, he was buried, resurrected, and ascended to the, God, to the right hand side of the God, the Father. And we know that. That is the essence of God's being. We know him. Not only we have the knowledge about the world which became flesh, Jesus Christ, the incarnation, and we also have the knowledge of the true God. Continue in verse 20. We may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his son Jesus Christ. Who is this God he is talking about? True. And he is the only true God and, and we are in him. He is the true God and eternal life. First component is incarnation. Second component is we know that he is the true God. And not only true God, but he is also eternal life. What is eternal life? Who is eternal? Only God. Eternal life is not just a long life 
It's not just an elongated life. Eternal life is a qualitatively different kind of life. The quality of life that we live is not the quality of the life of God. We know that. This true God has eternal life and he has given us that quality of life, eternal life. As we conclude, let us affirm the three Christian certainties with which St. John ends this first epistle first. The Christian is redeemed, emancipated, delivered from the power of sin. Secondly, the Christian is on God's side because we are in him. The third certainty is that the Christian has the knowledge, knowledge beyond any shadow of doubt about the true God, about eternal life. Verse 20. What is the message for Christians from St. John as he concludes this first letter? Verse 21, he says, Little children, Keep yourselves from idols. Why does he call the Christians little children? John was quite a senior person when he was writing this letter, probably in his 90s. And so he calls the Christians little children, an affectionate term. What does he say? Little children, keep yourselves. So the Christians have a responsibility. We can't say, okay, God takes care of me. Why do I bother? No. Keep yourselves. You have a responsibility. What is it? Keep yourselves from what? Idols. Very strange. He doesn't say keep yourself from the world or keep yourselves from sin or this or that or the other. Idols. It means an idol is that which takes place of God himself. What is an idol? An idol is that which takes the place of God in one's life. It could be anything. Anything can become an idol. An idol is not just an image or a sculpture which is sitting in a corner. Anything can be an idol. Work, your work can become an idol. Or a friend or a person can become an idol. Money can become an idol. Property can become an idol. A position can become an idol. A pleasure, a desire can become an idol. Who gives us victory? John says, keep yourselves from idols, all these things that take the place of God in your life. Keep yourselves. Who gives the victory and power? Jesus, through the work of the Holy Spirit. Thank God if you are redeemed. Thank God if you are on God's side. Thank God if you know the true God and eternal life. But in case you say, I'm not sure. I don't belong to this faith. Yes, I have heard, but I have not experienced. Dear friend, this is the time for you to think of what Jesus did. We said incarnational truth is very important for emancipation. He came. God, the very God, became a human being. And he lived, he taught, and finally he prophesied his own death. And he died as a substitution for you and me, for my sin and your sin. And if you believe this, you are emancipated. You are redeemed and you are on God's side. And you will have the knowledge that you are following a true God. The bottom line is verse 18. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not continue to sin. 
if you have to experience victory, it's only through Jesus Christ. If you have to experience through your efforts, you will fail. You want victory from the power of sin, it is only Jesus. He will save us from the presence of sin when we are with him. May God bless to us as we think of these certainties. A Christian is emancipated. A Christian is on God's side. A Christian knows the true God and eternal life. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this letter which St. John has written to the church. And as he ends this letter, he is talking about some certainties. Help us to be certain of our salvation. May there not be any ambiguity, any doubt. We thank you that we are on your side when we are redeemed and emancipated. And we are saved from the power of sin. We don't habitually sin. We thank you that we know the true God. And because of that, we have eternal life, a quality of life which is very different from the life of this world. Thank you for enabling us to have this abundant life in Jesus Christ. We pray that you will enable someone who has listened to this message, who, are, who is not sure of emancipation and salvation, that that person will believe you and receive salvation and enjoy all these certainties. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Trusted in the barren land of sin and shame And nothing satisfying there I fall But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came Where springs of living water did above I'm drinking at the springs of living water Happy now am I, my, my soul is satisfied I'm drinking at the springs of living water Oh, wonderful and bountiful supply Oh, sinner, won't you come today to Calvary A fountain there is flowing deep and wide The Savior now invites you to the water free where springs in spirits can be satisfied I'm drinking at the springs of living water Happy now am my, my soul is satisfied I'm drinking at the springs of living water Oh, wonderful and bountiful supply